So hopefully this has been enjoyable for you. We're now just gonna do some aesthetic changes to our action script, meaning that when I, base, when I go to that section of price, I want this price button to no longer work because I'm in the price section, so I shouldn't get a finger tool. Plus, I wanna fade this out a little bit to tell people that I'm in the price section, the same thing with products and services. So let's understand how I can do that. Well, if I go to my price section, I could basically say this, I can literally type this dot. Now, unfortunately, th now with actually with CS5, you'll get code hints to pop up when you hit this. In CS4, you're not going to get code hints. You're going to have to type this from scratch. So I'm going to say this dot enabled equals what? Well, by default, enabled equals true. So we're going to have this equal false. So therefore, the button's not going to be enabled. So I'm going to take this code and copy it and put it inside of the other buttons, products buttons, and service buttons. So what that's going to do is when I go to that section, that button's not going to be enabled. So let's see how that works. So I play my movie, Command Return. I click Price. Price doesn't work anymore. That's a good thing. But then when I pick products, now products is not working and price is not working. The only thing that's working is services. And now I'm totally screwed because now nothing's working because I told it what to do, but I didn't tell it what not to do or what happens if I have a change of something. So how do I affect the logic? How do I change the logic of my action script? Well, very simply, we can create what's called a function. So basically what's happening here is when I come to this section, it's, it's disabling this instance name referring to this instance name. This equals this. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a custom function. So I'm simply going to type the word function, F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N. Now I call the function anything I want. I can call it Al Pacino goes to the movies I want to. I'm going to call the function simply reset nav Reset that button. That's the name of my function. A function just like a stop function or any other function is followed by an output and close parenthesis. Now, what do I want the function to do? What I want the function to do goes between two curly braces. So what I want the function to do here, I think I got ahead of myself here. What I want the function to do, hit the return key once twice. Now action script, actually CS5 will put that second curly brace in there for you. CS4 does not do that. So I forgot about that. So now what do I want this function to do? Well, I want it to reset these buttons back to their normal state. So I'm going to take this function and I'm going to say name the button dot enabled equals true semicolon. So I'm going to do the same thing. This function is called reset button. What does the reset button do? It's going to reset back the price, the products, the service button back to its normal state. Well, you might ask yourself, self, why am I setting it back to its normal state? Because isn't it true by default? Well, that's true. But with action script, I have to make the statement so I can disprove the statement. I'm making the statement so I can disprove the statement. Now, if you play this right now, nothing's going to happen because all we did was create a function. But now we need to execute the function. So as far as you're concerned, you made this great class of lemonade. You put sugar in it. You put ice in it. You never served it. So we need to execute this function. This is the name of the function right here. So we're going to execute the function by copying the name of the function. Now, here's my 50 cent question. These lines of code get executed 19, then 20, then 21, then 22, et cetera, et cetera. So, so this line of code for the function needs to happen before or after this. The answer is it has to happen before if it happens after, what does this function do? This function resets the buttons back to true. I don't want to reset the buttons back to true. I want to set all the buttons back to true. I'm just going to paste the function followed by a semicolon except this button. So this piece of code has to happen. Line 25 gets executed before line 26. So this has to happen first before this happens. Again, logic. Logic tells me I want to turn all the lights 
off in the apartment except this one. So I do the same thing down here. Return key and paste. I come down here. Oh, I did that one already. So I'm going to do this one. So I do this one, this one, this one. So that one, not paying attention here. Oh, forgot this one. Hit return key, paste. So now, command return. So now when I play the application again, click, the buttons don't work. But then when I click this, it reset the buttons back, it reset the buttons back to normal except this one. So this one doesn't work. I click here, this one works. Now, now this one doesn't work, but these two do work. So it's a perfect system. Now in addition to that, I want to fade this out a little bit so I can change the alpha. So I can come down here and say this dot underscore underscore alpha equals, let's make this 40 as in 40%. So I'm going to do the same thing. Alpha for products, alpha for services, alpha for price. So therefore it's going to change to 40%. So let's see if that works. So now I click price, price fades out to let the person know they're on the price button. Good. Now I click products, well they're still faded out because I didn't, I didn't tell it not to fade out. Now I already have a function called reset buttons. So I could simply, 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 I don't have to reinvent the wheel here guys. I would have a function generically called reset buttons. Notice I didn't call enable the buttons or a flop your rabbit ear button. I simply called it reset that button. So I can take the same name and I can say dot underscore alpha equals 100. Makes sense to me. So I'm setting everything back to 100 because this gets executed inside the script, the go to script. So this is going to say products and this is going to say service. Okay, so it's the same function. The function gets executed right here. I didn't have to reinvent the wheel and come up with a new function. I simply need to execute the function except it's going to leave this one to false and this one to 40. So now when I hit command return, I have a simple application. Price now fades, price doesn't work. Products now fades, products doesn't work. Services doesn't fade, services doesn't work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a simple plan, it's a simple process, and it works. So this helps you build your first Flash application the correct way using ActionScript 2.0. Please, please subscribe to my channel. I have one for Think Dreamweaver. I'm going to have a whole series. Think Flash, Think Dreamweaver, Think Photoshop, Think any Adobe or Apple product on the market. I'm a total master of this. I've been doing this for 23 years. I want to share my knowledge with you. Enjoy the rest of the series we're going to be publishing. Go to YouTube forward slash Think Dreamweaver for Dreamweaver te techniques and subscribe to this YouTube channel. When in New York City, come to my training classes, web search jediclasses.com, thinkdreamweaverclasses.com. We'll be able to help you every step of the way. Thank you.